Hello everyone, welcome to Jarkus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the Christmas and final episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Scrazzle's Revenge. Now this is not just a Christmas episode, this is yet another flashback episode. This time it's Steel and the Beast Bods reminiscing on things that happened during the year, while attempting to make some Christmas cookies. Which of course end up just getting burnt. <laughs> Now the rangers say they're going to be spending Christmas with the families instead of with the beast bots that grid battle force. And so our robotic buddies look back across what's happened over the past year and remember that they have really good parents. They have good families. They talk about how Zoe's mom helped with the X-Bikes way at the beginning of the season and how she also did not reveal the rangers identities. And we talk about how Devin's dad came to help him in the cyber dimension. And at the car wash too. <laughs> And they even talk about Kamanda Shaw, how she is both strict and also caring when it comes to Ravi. And when talking to the Rangers, they get some communication about something being done. And they tell the Beast Bots that, oh yeah, they're putting bathtubs in the Zords now that they're being rebuilt. <laughs> That's such an obvious lie, man. But of course they believe it. <laughs> now there's an attack in Coral Harbor, Scrozzle is back. With the last of his Robotrons, called Infernotron, which is pretty much just... A flame Robotron, along with a handful of Tronics. The three regular Rangers take out Infernotron pretty easily. Ravi and Zoe hold him back while Devin just fires up his B6 cannon to blow him up. Nate, however, gets shot by Scrozzle's gun shaped like a Christmas tree. That's attached to his own Christmas lights that are going into a big Christmas tree. And what that does is it traps him inside of an ornament on that tree. However, Scrozzle retreats because he runs out of Morphex. But not before getting Devin and Zoe while Steel is dealing with some... I almost said Vivex, this is wrong season. No, some Tronics. <laughs> Obviously, there's one thing to do. Take the tree and the transforming blaster back to Nate's lab. Where they try to figure out what to do. Now, Steel thinks he's got it covered. But what he does is he accidentally shoots Ravi with it. So he gets stuck. So now Steel is really unsure of his ability to help, even with Nate's instruction. But Nate reassures on that he'll be okay because it reminds of a time where the fake Nate and Steel helped him rebuild the Zord computer with his instructions. So that reassures the human robot hybrid ranger. There is a problem, however. A Giga Drone attacks. And this time it's piloted by Scrozzle. So basically it's Inferno Drone turned into a Megazord. Just for Scrozzle. Yeah, the Rangers can still talk inside their trapped ornaments. And Devin makes the call. The Beast Bot's gonna have to pilot the Zords by themselves. And Steel's gonna stay behind and help free the Rangers. Which is pretty neat. We have yet to see the Beast Bots do a Zord battle on their own. And they do pretty good at it. Mainly because it's just Cruz doing it. And Cruz was unsure before going into battle. As were Jax and Smash. But Jax gets reminded of how he helped deceive an enemy when he used a hologram projector, and Cruz was reminded of how he helped everyone escape from the powered up Tubutron when he had the Fury Cell. And then there was Smash a few episodes ago who defended Ravi personally in Gorilla Art. So everyone feels rare on the go. And really only Cruz fights, the other two evacuate the citizens because we actually see them fleeing in terror from burning buildings and such when the uh, Giga Drone attacks. Something we really haven't seen all season. <laughs> Jax is parting out the flames and Smash is helping him escape. And by escape, he's using the whole backside of him just to load up a bunch of cars to drive him to safety. That was fun. And Cruz is just t goes into cheetah mode in the races one and just attacks the two Gigatronics that Scrozzle throws out. And when he gets close, he goes into battle mode and quickly finishes him with the cheetah strike. Very short and sweet, but is really nice given the fact that, you know, it's just a beast boss without the rangers. So Scrozzle goes down with the Gigadrone. He's done for good. For someone who was around the entire season, that was really anticlimactic to get rid of Scrozzle. Especially since using a trap Christmas decorations was his only means of fighting back. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> he went out just so pathetically. And we even see a Morphex tower in the background as the fight's going on. That's pretty nice. The race of Zord just speeds by it and it's never getting mentioned again. Now back in the lab, Steel restores the Rangers. He doesn't get to be part of the action. But then the rangers have a surprise for the beast bots. There were no bathtubs on the zords. Their communication was from Santa Claus. Because they're all going to, to, to the North Pole to show off the beast bots first Christmas together. And we don't see that. We just see the sleigh taking off. Not even a close up of it. 
Though Santa does show up and he's done by the same actor who's done for the past few seasons in Ninja Steel and Dino Charge. Now we've seen that there are multiple range of dimensions and now there's basically three of them where Santa Claus is the same guy. So does he exist in all realities <laughs> in the Power Rangers multiverse now? <laughs> Overall this was a better than average Christmas episode. I mean it does resolve the one floating plot point left over from Evox Upgraded which was Scrozzle escaping. Now I really wish he would have survived and made it to do something in the second season that we're getting for Beast Morphers. And there's even no mention of the foreshadowing that Devin's dad is probably infected by Evox and will be a villain in the next season. That's not confirmed, but they extremely hinted at it visually in the previous episode. And there's no talk of the real Blaze or the real Roxy, which I think was a misstep, because if there was any time to show what happened in the aftermath of the final battle of Evox before moving on to the next season, this would be it. So I just hope they don't rush anything involving them in the next season. And overall, this first season was extremely good. I feel like they cut some corners towards the end and rushed a few things, like with the Fury Cells and Vargoyle, and maybe a bit in the final battle of Evox as well. I mean, we have the Ultra Zord, which is always shown to be extremely powerful. And at the same time it's first deployed, it destroys some Gigatronics, which is nothing new, even though Standard Invasive Zord could do that. Only for it to be dismantled almost immediately. So I hope in the second season we see the Ultra Zord do more ultra things. <laughs> Can't really find the right word for that. Make it live up to his name is what I wanted to do. Like the stuff of Devin and his dad was not fully fleshed out. It was fleshed out just enough. But there was huge gaps of time between the times we saw Devin and his father together. And really it had no impact on anything except for the last moments of episode 19 and almost all of episode 20. It was fine what we got, but I feel like it could have gone into a little more detail. Same thing with Commander Shaw. Same thing with Commander Shaw and Robbie's art and the performing arts. She clearly looks down on it despite having it be in her bloodline and her family. And Robbie never has it addressed with her. Now since we're directly continuing into a second season, I'm hoping these things do get addressed in explored in more detail. And the other nitpick I had with this season is the fact that the Rangers are not allowed to reveal their identities. For a couple of reasons. First of all, Grid Battle Force is not a top secret organization. Everyone knows who it is. The mayor can just walk right in there and go to whatever part of the facility that he wants, even though it's supposedly a military operation. And they never really explicitly say that. I mean, we see the Rangers trying to hide it and not wanting certain people to know. But it's not revealed until very, very late that it is against their regulations to let people know that they're rangers. And I feel it would have been better if things were a lot more explicit about it earlier on. I mean, they do show a good reason why it should be kept secret in Ranger Reveal, but they never go any detail on it further than that before or after. I mean, hell, Lightspeed Rescue, they were all government rangers and so were SPD, and never once did they hide their identities. They just morphed when they needed to. And I feel like we sh could have used a lot more of that. I think the season would have been much better if they took a stronger stance on how they wanted that to be instead of being very vague about it until near the end. But overall, this is among the best seasons we've had since Dino Charge. I mean, all the flaws I really have with it are minor and also come from the fact that I'm a 30 year old man analyzing a show meant to sell toys to 8 year old kids. <laughs> But I would definitely recommend this season because it's very good in action, it's very good in story, it's very good in character. And even the comic relief is not obnoxious like Victor, Vincent, and Monty. Speaking of which, Ben and Betty were not in this episode at all. But yeah, Beast and Warfare Season 1, very solid from start to finish. I cannot say anything truly negative about it. And I'm just repeating myself in so because at this point. Beast and Warfare Season 1, definitely give it a go. All the flaws are very minor and... You can easily overlook them. I anyway, mean, that's all for this time. This has been Jargus. Thanks for watching. Have a happy holiday. And I'll see you in February for the start of season two. Until then, let the power protect you. With